happy Thursday. So, um, I feel a little bit awkward. I'm doing, I always feel awkward when I do these in somebody else's house or in another location. If I'm in a hotel, it's not as awkward because it's my space. Um, but, you know, when I'm in someone else's house, it's like, ah, oh, I've got to tuck into this other room and look for good acoustics, which I don't know if they're very good. It sounds echoey. Uh, and some good light. And uh, I'm going to do a video blog. <laughs> uh, I get self-conscious. Um, and that kind of goes with a little bit what I was thinking about this morning, which is going all in. And the resistance to hold a little bit back, whether it's 2%, 3%, 5%. And in the past and at times, I hold a little bit back because that way I can use the excuse that I didn't give 100%. Well, see, like I didn't try all that much, you know, or, you know, it didn't mean that much to me when it did mean a lot to me. The truth of the matter of all of that is that I'm too afraid to give 100% because if I've given 100% and I fail, then I, then I failed. But freedom from failure, right? Is there failure? No. I, I think, I mean, yes, but no. If it's all a lesson and it's all an experience, the failure can be used as something to uh, inform the future your progress. Uh, I think, you know, a lot of successful people talk about their willingness to fail uh, and the number of times they failed before they were a great success. So I can, we can, as individuals learn from our peers and, and mentors and fellows and do our best to commence to outgrow fear. You know, fear is, uh, you know, it steals our moments, steals our moments. If I'm afraid to give 100% in a job or a sport or a conversation or a relationship, then how will I know if it could have ever succeeded if I would have given 100%? It's a, you know, it's putting your, it's another way of living with no railings. Anyway, much love. Have a fantastic day.